Okay, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here, glitching in and out of reality, and hopefully I'll be your favorite Diablo 4 content creator. Now, what I'm here to talk to you about is the Season of Blood, that is Season 2, starting on October 17th. Alright, it's a long way away, but I think even Diablo has kind of realized that Season of Malignant, Season 1, is kind of a bust. Alright, nobody's interested in it. I've gotten so bored of even streaming it that, like, there's just no point in me even continuing anymore. Okay, now there's still some problems to be addressed, but this potential teaser, this update, is, is a big win. Is a big win. Let me go through with it with you, and then I'll explain why, okay? Like I said, there's still stuff to be done, but I'm going to cover that in the later part of the video. Let's talk about the Season of Blood coming and what's actually coming in here, alright? I'm going to shift over to the other side of the screen. Zabow! What up? <laughs> alright. A fanged threat emerges from the shadows in our second season, Wanderer. At Gamescom opening night, the Diablo 4 development team announced the Season of Blood will begin on October 17th. Basically, there's a new army of ravenous vampires coming around, so we got Morbius up in this. Alright, for those of you that don't like Morbius, okay, I blame you. I blame you for everything. Okay, but, um, no. <laughs> so, Jared Leto is going to be running around uh, Sanctuary. And we don't know what his plot is, but suffice to say, he's probably going to morb all over us. The Season of Blood will introduce a new quest line for us to uncover. Vampiric powers to wield against Jared Leto. And five additional endgame bosses with the ability to target specific unique and uber unique items. Keyword there, uber unique items as a drop. Alright. So. Season of Blood. Um, well... Really weird looking Morbius over there, but five new endgame bosses, all right, will provide additional endgame challenges, and they will allow for target farming of uniques and uber uniques, all right? Renown rewards, now this is something I'm really happy about because it proves that they are listening to us, all right? The skill point changes, the potions, the obols, and the paragon points are all going to carry over. No need to refarm that, thank God, because we're not touching this shit again. I said it before. Okay, Renown is the biggest deal breaker, and that's why so many people didn't even start the season. Have to redo Renown? We already did it before. We're not doing the same side quest again. This is a major win. So, you can get straight into the season and focus on the action. As soon as the season starts, I don't have to worry about, no, like, oh, I gotta do these side quests. No, bang. Eight hours. Now, for the first character, the rest can go Donheim Tunnels. But, eight hours, bang, I'm in there. I'm going to be World Tier 3. We're going to be pushing those levels, getting the materials that we need. Zip, zap, zoom. Zip, zap, zoom. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. Renown rewards, bada bing, bada boom. I'm happy. Additionally, they're going to introduce some community requested quality of life updates. More efficient inventory management for gems. If I recall, they're going to go into like a wallet kind of dealio. So we don't have to waste stash space, inventory space. Paragon points, skill points, potion ch charges, obel capacity will now carry over. <clears throat> Changes to the functionality of status effects such as vulnerable, overpower, critical strike damage, and elemental resistances. I look forward to seeing how these will impact the builds. Alright. Um, next. Well, they already covered the rest of the stuff. Status effects here, gem and stash. Gems will no longer take up inventory space. Stash can be searched and filtered. But I see nothing on loot filters, all right? There are still some areas of concern that they have mentioned, all right? If you go to if you were to go to uh, D, um, Adam Fletcher's, Adam Fletcher, let's go see there. If you go over to Pez Radar's um, Twitter, all right? Somebody asked about regarding the five endgame bosses. Are they season two exclusive, or are they showing up in the Eternal Realm? Guess what? They're showing up in the Eternal Realm as well. Okay? So, that is really good. And I'll address that a bit more after we watch the announcement trailer. Okay? First, let's watch the announcement trailer. And then, I'm going to cover all the stuff that I think, alright, has not yet been addressed. These are some other areas of concern. Alright? I'm actually going to tag Adam Fletcher in this, you know, uh, on Twitter after I finish making this video. Because I feel that this is something that the dev team needs to think about. I might be a small creator that nobody's going to pay attention to. But I'm going to tell you this right now. There are some things that I think they need to pay attention to if they want their game to be great. Okay? Let's take a look at this. First, the trailer. It 
started small. Nameless people that no one would miss. Dead. Discarded. Their throats torn open. The church ignored the killings. Even as fear mounted like the bodies. I gotta say, I love this cinematics. The Ooh, damn. And the brave fought to end the corruption. But they were too late. Uh, jump scare. It changed them. Killed them. Brought them back. Hungry. I have fought this plague a long time. We need something different. A survivor with all of their strengths and none of our weaknesses. Someone unexpected. And they'll never see you coming. Track them. Hunt them. Kill them. In the realm of darkness, we are the beacon of light. Let our stakes pierce through the hearts of the damned. For tonight, we hunt. Hmm. For tonight, we hunt in hell. Hey, I see racks over there. Anyway, um, okay. Let's talk about this right now. We are going to meet Eris, the vampire hunter, who is apparently a hella hot rogue, okay? We are going to meet Eris. And she's going to, you know, hunt vampires with us. Basically, we're going to have our blade moment, okay? Um, so... We're probably going to run around Sanctuary feeling like Wesley Snipes. You know, all of their strengths, none of their weaknesses, except for the thirst. You know, maybe we have to feed on some villagers. Okay. I don't know what's coming, but I'm excited for it. That said, you know, despite all this good stuff, here is the main crux of the video, which I'm sure you guys were interested in. Here is the problems that still remain in the game right now that I think the development team needs to take a look at for Season 2. You've still got time. Let me talk about this because I think you guys need to hear it. Number one, loot is not exciting. Once I got to level 80, I was not getting any upgrades for my gear. I was literally eyeballing through all these pieces of gear. You could see it multiple times on stream and I sell everything because none of it's good. I don't care like that the affixes are random. That's fine. That doesn't bother me. But the fact is that because the affixes all roll within a particular range, even if I'm doing a tier 60 Nightmare Dungeon, my loot is the same as I was getting in a tier 40 Nightmare Dungeon. I'm still just searching for the affix and hoping for a high roll. This needs to change. Loot is no longer exciting and there's no gripping need to go into a higher tier Nightmare Dungeon. I may as well just play to the level offset and have an easy time, but that in itself is boring. It's turning people off because it is a dull grind. There has to be something that gives people that dopamine you know, other than me glitching in and out of reality, there has to be something that gives people the dopamine that they need to carry on, you know, playing through the game for, um, and getting better and better loot. Why are we advancing through these nightmare tiers, encountering harder challenges, facing creatures way above our level for no reason? Just for the sake of the challenge? I'm bored as hell. Nobody's going to do it just for the sake of the challenge. So here is a quick suggestion. A quick suggestion on loot. Okay? Hear me out. I would like it if, say, let's say as the tier of the Nightmare Dungeon progresses, the range on the affix rolls sh um, shrinks, contracts, all right? I'd search my brain for a moment for that word. Let, let me explain it in a simple way. Let's say in a tier 4, 40 Nightmare Dungeon, right? My vulnerable damage can roll between 7% to 14 percent let's just say as a as a loose example right then in a tier 60 nightmare dungeon how about we shorten the range between 10 to 14 percent 
So the lowest roll that you will ever achieve, all right, would be 10%, okay? And the highest possible roll is 14, right? So I'm not suggesting to change the upper range, all right? I'm not suggesting to change the upper limits or anything. I'm saying make sure that we're always, in general, getting higher potential rolls. Make a minimum roll no longer possible. Then but if you do a tier 80 Nightmare Dungeon and you successfully complete it, maybe the roll range is between 12 to 14. Something like that. Give us the opportunities to not only farm the gear we want, but take on a harder challenge so we can get that gear upgrade. As soon as we see that, bang, these are the affixes from that dungeon, they roll better. All right? Maybe you could structure something like this to do with item power. That would be really great if you could, but if you can't, I also understand it. But this needs to happen because the loot system that we have right now is not satisfying. Don't, don't even talk about loot filters. Loot filters are another thing that needs to happen. We need to be able to target farm certain affixes on our stuff and pay no attention to the rest because it's just boring having to eyeball everything after every single dungeon. Give us some loot filters. Give us something like that. Give us a pet that can pick up loot items. These are all minor quality of changes, quality of life changes, but the main key is that loot is not exciting. There is no excitement in seeing the loot on the ground. I see the loot, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to eyeball this later, but, like, it doesn't make me excited. I'm not happy that, oh my god, I just gotta kill a whole bunch of creatures, they just dropped a whole bunch of rare loot. I'm like, oh god, I've gotta start through this shit and I'm probably gonna throw everything away. That's what I do almost after every dungeon. What is the point in loot dropping if there's no potential for upgrades, you see? I don't mind that the affixes are so randomized, but stop with the randomized rolls and having a huge range on the randomized rolls. Enough is enough. Give us a reason to do the higher tier Nightmare Dungeons. To take on those challenges with friends. Okay? That is the first thing that needs to be fixed. Loot must be fixed. Second, here's another issue that I think really, really needs to be fixed. Alright? I'm going to say it straight. Uber Lilith sucks ass. Unless you're going to use a very specific build that is designed to take her down. Her mechanics are bullshit. The boss fights... I don't mind Elden Ring level difficulty boss fights. I don't mind Dark Souls difficulty boss fights. But my evasion needs to have a purpose. She's got some one-shot mechanics that I cannot evade with anything other than Blood Mist, say, on my Necromancer. Other characters might have an easier time because I could just teleport them to a specific location away from where her attack is going to hit. But 95% of the mechanics that she has is, is total bull. And I cannot, I literally cannot for the life of me evade her attacks except through a very tiny and small window which does not make for a good boss fight. If you want to have one-shot mechanics, they must be clearly communicated. They must be something that you can dodge and evade with for a reasonable player. And I'm talking as somebody who plays MOBAs. I'm talking as somebody who plays other types of games as well. The mechanics on Uber Lilith are kind of bold. If, they, if she cannot be beaten with a general variety of builds and then you need to build something specific and special just to deal with her nonsensical mechanics, that is not a good boss fight. I'm sorry, but that's not. I don't care what the difficulty is. I don't care, you know, how the fight was designed or whatever else. No. No, I'm sorry. That is not a good fight. That is a terrible, terrible fight. All right? And even Elden Ring and Dark Souls, they do boss fights way better. So these five endgame bosses, I really hope that you guys don't structure them like Uber Lil. If you want to have one-shot mechanics, that's fine. Clear communication. Clear communication this is going to kill you. Your character needs to say something. Your character needs to be like, okay, shit, we're going to die if this happens now. Please don't don't quote the line, okay, shit, this, this you know, we're going to die if this happens. But, like, come on. Um, there have been so many other games. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but just, you know, it sits in my brain. Not the specific game, but the mechanics itself. Like, your character might yell out, quickly, into my circle. Oh, we actually, you know what? We did it. We did it in Diablo. In, in the whole, um, in, the, in the campaign. Vigo's like, um, quickly into my shield or something like that, whatever, you know, in, in that fight against the Herald of Blood or whatever. And and that 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 clearly shows that, okay, I need to go into the shield to avoid death. Uber Lilith doesn't have any of that. And yes, it's supposed to be a tough fight, but it's ridiculous. You know, I don't want to have to structure a specific build to beat her. You know, especially when it's already so clunky to rebuild your whole character. And of course, to find the gear to rebuild your character. So your endgame boss fights, y'all need to work on that. Your boss fights are not fun. This is something that Path of Exile 2 is kicking your ass on, especially from the demos and the rave reviews that they've been getting from all the people that they paid off probably to write those reviews. But listen, 
whatever the case is, you know, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm a hater of Path of Exile, but, but I'm gonna tell you this straight up, okay? They have good boss fights, or, uh, or at least what's coming for Path of Exile 2 sounds pretty good in theory. This is how a boss fight should be. There should be mechanics to it. They should be like, okay, I, if I evade this perfectly with one evade charge, because otherwise all the other innate evade stuff, like, is useless. Like, don't, don't tell me that evade and giving you movement speed after is useless and that our boots should only have evade charges on them and we need four evade charges to beat Uber Lilith. That invalidates, like, most of your gear. That is not good. The fight should be such that, okay, as soon as we evade, we've got iframes or we can evade through an attack to gain iframes. Dodge roll, like, through an attack, we're fine. This should be what evasion is about. Evasion should not be what it currently is and that is what makes the Uber Lilith mechanic Bullshit. She's not fun to play. Make sure you guys address this because otherwise we are going to have some serious problems in Season 2 that you already have in Season 1. Sure, the Season will probably do better, but players are going to get to level 100, not be able to finish the Greatest Challenge, have to use a specific build. They can't even use the build that they played the whole game with, and then they're like, oh, forget it, I don't, wanna, I don't have any incentive to go on. That's how a lot of me and my community are feeling right now. So, these are two big areas of concern that you guys need to address for Season 2. Number one, in summary, loot needs to be exciting. Loot does not excite me. I cannot get the best loot unless I play for hours and hours and hours or use Sanctuary Diablo to trade and, and pay an exorbitant price to get a best roll. That is ridiculous. Give us an incentive to be playing those higher tier Nightmare Dungeons. Make sure that everybody gets a chance at the best loot, okay? You have to cater to casuals. You want to make a big profit? Cater to casuals. All right. Nobody cares what the hardcores think. Hardcores are your worst player base. Okay. Don't care what anyone says about this take. Nobody gives a shit about the hardcores. Okay. I've known several games that have only focused on the hardcores. Guess what? They're still sitting on a low ass player base right now with the hope and prayer that they're going to bring in more people with another update. Are the people going to come back? I don't think so. They haven't shown me any sign of coming back at all for these other games. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting to play these things. Don't fall into that trap tell you cater to the casuals early and not only will they be spending dollars and dollars and dollars getting their skins and everything up you have more people streaming your game because there's more incentives to stream and earn cash i was earning so much ad revenue in the first month that diablo dropped that it was the hottest thing i i structured my whole channel around that now i'm having to look at other stuff already because the interest has fallen off don't be like that okay that's no good for anybody so these this is my feedback to you guys Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, and of course, thank you to all the supporters who make videos like this possible. You guys are amazing. Here are my top, top tier for August. Let me give a shout out to these peeps. All right, starting right at the top, we've got Big Chungus as our top tipper. Top tipper list, Jason Leaving, Mo Rizzle. Top super chatter, Big Chungus, Ender, both tied. Top super chatter list, Marcus Carrillo, Juan San, Mike Cawthorn, Daryl Neo, Tim Edmondson, Mo Rizzle, I'm not that guy. Top channel membership gifts, <coughs> Big Chungus, highest membership gifters, Mike Cawthorn, Newbie, Books Lugus. Thank you guys so much. All right. Now, channel members. Thank you guys as well. Let me go through all the channel members right now that have supported this channel. Once again, starting right at the top, we got Big Chungus at the only fan level. Thank you so much. Jerry Fast, OG, Rogue Assassin, Zach MG at Prestige. Thank you guys so much. Death Donnie 982 at plus ultra for 18 months thank you so much for that you are amazing all right thank you so much for all the kind support and thank you to our honored robots as well here are our honored robots Juan San, Corey Ryu, Marcel, Kashiwa, Bob, John, Maxim Lotz, Devin Lashin, Muki Mocha, Rena, Chase Taylor, Nathan Strong, Nightshade, Lady Neo, Joey Danze, Che D12, Syed Asad, Code CMF, Kami SMH, Conrad C, Nate the Great, and Benjamin Savage thank you guys so much for supporting this channel all right I'll see you guys on the next one all right and Adam Fletcher, I hope you listen to the suggestions I have. Trust me, I want to make your game great, okay? I know I'm nobody, but I want to make your game great, okay? Give me a chance.